outside the gates with a huge crowd. And they're screaming that he's the king of the Jews. Should we let him in? How many people? Maybe hundreds. He's just a pretender, a king. What a joke. He won't be a problem. Like Barabbas, was he a problem? Were you a chance letting this one in the city? Can I chance keeping him out? Who's to say he won't close a riot if he gets to the gates? And who's to say they won't riot at the city gates if I don't allow him in? No, don't do it. We can handle this. There's too many people. You're afraid of a king on a donkey? Open the gates! We need a king, a king of the Jews. We need a mighty conqueror. We need a plan, this is the plan. We need a king of the Jews. A girl will stand up, a reason to sing. A mighty Messiah. Possible? Can so many years have gone by since that day? I used to wonder whether I should have let him in. If only I knew then what I know now. Now being a Roman myself, I know the Roman mind. In fact, I knew that centurion Marcus. He wasn't afraid of any enemy, but he was terrified of his own superiors. Fearful of an insurrection at the gates, he let all of them in. Jesus, the disciples, the crowds, even Jesus' his mother, Mary. It, it was, was pandemonium. My son's disciples thought he was going to set up some sort of kingdom right there in Jerusalem, even throw out the Romans. Peter was more excited than any of them. <laughs> so what's new? I told him, I know my son, this isn't about politics, even if we are in Jerusalem. Jerusalem. I thought, it's time. His kingdom starts now. This is what we had been waiting for. I had waited too long for God's kingdom on earth to be established, so I decided to see if I could hurry his timing. But in the end, my own name became a synonym for murderer, rioter, Barabbas, the insurrectionist. And then I met the woman. She was fascinated by Jesus' teachings, but she was different. A Roman. Educated, I'm sure. I don't know if she was a follower. But she must have really wanted to know about him because as a Roman, she was risking all I had to be there. But I couldn't help myself. He was much more than a simple rabbi, more than a prophet, much more. I had no idea who she was, but she seemed to know me and who Jesus was. She wanted to know where he would be teaching. The temple, of course. Rally the people. Raise your army. They couldn't stop us. This is what I had waited for since the day I was chosen as one of the twelve. We went right to the temple, and then 
Jesus strode into the temple. It's not a marketplace to sell your wares. This is my father's house, a holy place of prayer. Selling a sacrifice, robbing mankind. This is my father's house, how could you be so blind? that they turned their temple into a den of robbers. Fearless or foolish, but amazing. He had a passion for the temple I'd never seen before. No, he was no ordinary man. the temple every, every morning. morning Jesus would show up at the temple you understand we had to keep an eye on him I decided to have one of my squads handle it but I went myself the first day and then the second and then the third I used to laugh Mark is a centurion a hundred men with little to do but polish his armor and he himself was required to keep track of this one rabbi no he felt it too I know it this Jesus, he could see deep into our hopeless souls, and instead of looking down on us and being repelled at Romans nonetheless, he loved us. There was something about this man I never experienced before, but how long would the chief priest allow this to go on? On Passover, Jesus told John and I to make preparations for Passover supper. How were we to find a place? We didn't know anyone in Jerusalem. He told us that we would find a man carrying a jar of water, and he would have a place for us. That's exactly what happened. It took us a long time to get used to miracles. But finally, place to relax. No one knew where we were. Of course, we knew where they were. I had never spent a more wonderful and painful time with the rabbi. He spoke of frightful things. Yet, through the whole night, I knew his love had never been more obvious. I honestly believed he would do anything for us. I knew that in his heart, he considered us worth his very own life.
about to do. Too quickly. Out the door, down the stairs, and into the night. Off in the direction of Caiaphas' palace. Right in front of me. I'd seen this type of thing before. Betrayed? I was almost certain. But why wasn't I relieved? Another threat to the peace eliminated. Another problem solved. Then tell me why I ached inside. Even after Jesus told us who it was, I, I didn't understand. But I knew I would never betray him. I would lay down my life for you. Would you really, Peter? I tell you the truth. Before the rooster crows, you will have disowned me three times. Deny you, Lord. No, never. Never. The chief priests came to us that night with their information, and just as I thought, Judas would lead us to Jesus. And then we were to arrest him. We, and what Roman law had Jesus broken? I wondered if any of that mattered anymore, but no, it would not be a Roman arrest. I would go with them though. If it happened anywhere around Jerusalem, it was my business. if you knew what tonight held. Could you even understand my father's plan? A breath of a plea, a single word in the agony would never happen. While you sleep, legions of angels wait to save me. But in calling them, I would lose you. The world would go its own way, and that's too high a price. Oh, my father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken, May your will be done. My friends, my confidants, why are you sleeping? Could you not watch? Could you not pray? Could you not find the strength to stay? Awake with me. If you knew what I know, feeling what I feel, you would stand beside me, facing this ordeal. If you could see into tomorrow, for a moment feel my sorrow. If you knew what I know, you would know the cost that's hanging in the balance, hanging on the cross. If the weight of all the world was on your heart, where would you start? Is my love strong enough to hold me? Or will nails have to pierce my hands? Will I be crushed by the cross for the sin that I carry? How much more can I? Much more can love demand. Father, could there be another way? Could there be a better plan? 
not just the nails that will pierce my hands. Let me be crushed by the weight of the sin that I came. I will pay the price. But as the mob moved, I could see someone following us in the shadows at a distance. I'm sure no one else saw him, but as a soldier, I was trained to be aware of my surroundings. I had to see where they were taking him. I kept my distance so I wouldn't be seen. When we got to Caiaphas' house, this same man entered the courtyard and sat down next to a fire. I recognized him as one of Jesus' disciples, aren't you? Me? One of his followers? No, you're mistaken. Once I found out whether they were going to let him go, I could report to the rest of the disciples. No, I'm sure. I saw you in the garden. No. I was not there. Please, just leave me alone. I'm gonna have to leave here. If I'm recognized, there's no telling what's going to happen. You're right. I saw him there too. That could have been the way. Please, leave me alone. I don't know him. I never have. <laughs> no!
this would happen. No, not a dream. A horrible nightmare. I sent the note to Pilate to make sure he had nothing to do with that innocent man. You take him and crucify him. He has violated no law. Yes, I sent the note to Pilate, my husband. I couldn't tell anybody who I was or they wouldn't have anything to do with me. I couldn't tell Mary because I was afraid something like this would happen. The note was the most I could do. If Pilate knew where I had been and what I was doing, that I'd followed that man. It is my custom to release a prisoner to you each Passover. Let me give you Jesus. Barabbas, they cried. Oh, I could hear them for myself. Crucify him. Crucify me. So they had come for me. I was their friend. I risked my life and took one, trying to throw the Romans out of Jerusalem. Is this how they repay me? Barabbas is a murderer, an insurrectionist. He'll make trouble for you. Silence! Fine. Here is your key. I give him to you. I am innocent of this man's blood. The stain is not on your hands, Pilate. Camilla, how can you talk to him that way? He, he's my husband, Mary. Away with him! Let him be crucified! <laughs>
Why was it my job to take him to the place of execution? You know, I began to believe that Jesus was my prisoner only because he allowed himself to be my prisoner. I knew with the blink of an eye, he could be free. I was let go on the very day I thought would be my last because of this man, Jesus. As far as I can tell, an, an innocent, innocent man, man traded for a murderer. Barabbas incited a riot. He tried to overthrow the Roman government here. He killed people, and they wanted him released? Well, that was almost as distasteful as being party to the execution of an innocent, innocent man. man. My blameless child. I was well aware that he belongs to the Father, to all of us, to you. But he belonged to me first. My innocent baby. An, an innocent, innocent man, man carrying a cross. If they had known, if they had known he was carrying it. For me, he was dying on my cross, carrying the cross. I should have carried it. My boy. My prisoner. My king. My lord.
the sky grows dark. It seemed as though even the earth and the sky believed that it was God's Messiah dying on that cross. I had waited so long for Yeshua, patiently for a while. I studied the scriptures. I knew all the signs to look for, all the prophecies. Am I still waiting? For what have I gotten for my waiting? Not even a sign that the Father still loved us. And so I took on Rome myself. Or so I tried. And so I failed. But then Jesus showed up. Not what I had expected from the Messiah, even from the miracles, from all I had heard about him. It seemed that I still had a better chance of overthrowing the Romans. It is finished! It is finished! It is finished. Betrayed by a friend for 30 pieces of silver. But wasn't that predicted? Wasn't Jesus from the family of David? And wasn't he born in Bethlehem? My God, God, why have you forsaken me? Why have you forsaken me, he wondered? Would God let the Messiah die? Remember your temple training. Remember learning the 22nd Psalm as a child. It predicted the Messiah, and it started with those words. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Quoting scripture? I knew every word of that psalm. All who see me mock me, and all my bones are out of joint. My strength is dried up, and my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. They have pierced my hands and feet. They divide my garments among them and cast lots for my clothing. But that doesn't mean him. Why would God forsake him? Was he showing us where to look? You know in your heart that this was all predicted. Look in the psalm. Father, forgive them. Because they don't know what they're doing. Oh, Father, tell me I'm wrong. Not the one I've waited so long for! Not on my cross! All my life I fought the fight Prepared for royalty Stirred the crowd with rebel might Awaiting prophecy Now my heart feels chained inside For fear he is the one was I blinded by determined pride? Could he be your son? My God, my God, have you forsaken him? Have we mistaken him? Is he the key? Here at the cross, where he died in my place, have I come face to face with heaven's key? All this time I've turned away. I didn't want to see the truth of the price he paid so my life would be free. As the sword went through his side, his light pierced through my heart. Forgive me, son of God, I cried. I know now who
Son of God? What were you thinking, Marcus? Honorable Pilate, before he was crucified, this liar Jesus said he would rise after three days. Rise? Alive. And then I understood the difference between a believer and a follower. One is transformed by believing. The other is just terrified. The disciples, they didn't understand that Jesus was to rise again. But the Pharisees, they knew, and they moved to prevent it. We would like to see the tomb guarded. I would like to see one Roma guard at the tomb at all times. One? Well, why not take two? We'll set a two-man guard. Marcus will give you his best soldiers, and will change shifts frequently so that they're always alert. And we would like to keep the stone in place. Well, why don't we seal the tomb? Good idea. We'll seal the tomb then. Finally, someone who understands our dilemma. Certainly I do. It became obvious just recently. So our problem is solved? Listen, if this Jesus decides to leave that tomb, there is nothing anyone could do to stop him. Your problem is only beginning. Then why the second man? I just like the idea of more witnesses. Just post the guard and seal the tomb. It will be done. was. But on the third day, my curiosity got the best of me. I started out for the tomb just after daybreak. On the way there, I met the two duty guards. The two went back to town, left their post, which was astounding. One, because they were the best we had. And two, if a Roman soldier loses what he's guarding, it's a, a death, death sentence. sentence. But the guards had already met with the chief priests and agreed to say that they had fallen asleep and that Jesus' disciples had stolen his body. Then they told me the real story. Pilate wondered how the guards could have seen Jesus' disciples steal a body if they were asleep. Or, for that matter, how they slept through a stone being dragged away. He was astounded that they would admit to what amounted to a death sentence. But then the guards were paid off and the Pharisees said to Pilate, it seems their Jesus' problem had just begun. After the guards told me what really happened, I ran the rest of the way to the tomb. When I got there, I found Peter, and just as I was told, Jesus was gone. Alive, I told him. Then we laughed, cried, and joked around the tomb like madmen. I told Peter that I could barely understand my soldiers. They had ran back from the tomb without stopping. They were white with fear as they told of the amazing appearance of a man in clothes that glowed like lightning. He rolled the stone away. The grave clothes were folded in the tomb. The two angels said, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is alive!
changed forever the moment I realized who Jesus was. It changed again when I told my superiors that my last prisoner was creator of the world who died to save us and had come back to life. I have my life back. Back to Rome, Marcus went. Oh, by the way, the letters I've received from home tell me that Christianity has suddenly taken hold in Rome. What a coincidence. It seems the Pharisees underestimated Jesus. Jesus came back with power and changed everything. And this time, I'm ready to follow him to the ends of the earth and for whatever that brings. I talk to Camilla a lot these days. She's a wonderful believer. My son returned to me and to you. The baby to whom I gave life has given it back to me. Life forever with power. power. The Messiah has come. And according to his plan, not mine. And he has freed the captives just as I prayed. My heart is free and my spirit is free. And now he's using his power to change the world. Gates of hell. 